Welcome to Experience Oldsmar, a podcast created by and for those who love this special place. I'm your host, Deb Vitrelli, broadcasting from the top of Tampa Bay in beautiful downtown Oldsmar. In tow is our awesome engineer, Mark McGinley. So, it seems appropriate that our first guest would be someone who has greatly contributed to our city over the years. We are honored to have Oldsmar City Manager Al Braithwaite as our inaugural podcast guest. Al's professional career spans 30-plus years among four different municipalities across Pinellas County. He has been employed by the City of Oldsmar since 1999, first as Finance Administrator and subsequently as Director of Administrative Services prior to be hiring prior to be hired as Oldsmar City Manager in 2017. Al holds a bachelor's degree from Ecker College, go Tritons, and a master's degree in public administration from the University of South Florida, go Bulls. Welcome, Al. Thank you. Good to be here. So, March 9th was Oldsmar's Municipal Election Day. Council Member Andrew Knapp, representing seat three, ran unopposed, and he was recently named vice mayor. Two candidates vied for seat one, with Steve Graber winning by eight, yes, eight votes. The fact alone should embed the importance of voting to everybody out there. Council members Knapp and Graber will serve Oldsmar through March of 2024. So, Al, was this the closest election in Oldsmar's history? I don't believe so, Deb. I think they found in the historical archives that there was one closer than that, maybe seven votes a long time ago. I don't remember who was involved, but they did find one where it was closer. Wow. And just out of curiosity, I don't know if you know this or not, I'm going to throw something at you, but if if it came down to a tie, how would they have determined that? That's a good question. Um, I think in one place in the charter, I think it involved some kind of straws or, I mean, it could get really down to something as quick as a binary decision, but I don't remember if it was a coin toss or a recount. I'm really not sure. Yeah, it would be different. Um, it was a unique election, that's for sure. No doubt. Uh, so when is the next election? Next March. Oh, and what seats will be open for that? Let's see. The mayor's seat will be open and Dan's seat and Katie's seat. So that's four and two. Four and two. Wow. So if somebody wanted to run for council or even mayor, what do they do? Well, the simplest answer to that would be to go talk to the city clerk and Nixon, who could outline the process for you and how you'd have to qualify and what your time frames were and that kind of thing. But that uh, that's the procedural answer. The overall answer might be to volunteer for something like definitely go to Citizens Academy, volunteer for a board. Because normally those are the avenues by which we end up getting people to run for council. You don't have to. You can go run for council as long as you're a resident, but it's kind of a good way to go because then you find out more about the city before you throw your hat in the ring. Jump in the ring, yeah. Yeah. A lot of responsibilities behind that. Um, so many, many may already know that you're a huge sports fan. But what they may not know is how you developed the city's partnership with the Tampa Bay Lightning to become Boltzmar. I love saying that, Boltzmar. So can you tell us how this partnership started? Sure. Um, Felicia, Chip, and I were mulling over ideas one morning, and um, I knew that there was a program in the NHL where they were in the business of funding the building of outdoor rinks as a means by which they were promoting the game or trying to. And I think Pittsburgh was considered the standard because they had, I think we found out, something like 110 rinks in the Allegheny County area to do nothing but, you know, support the team. And um, I suggested to Chip at the time, or Felicia and Chip, that um, why don't we call the Lightning and see if they have such a program. And we lucked out because not only did the phone call get returned, it got returned by Jay Feaster, who was the general manager, as you and I know, of the (laughs) team that won the Cup the first time. So we were very excited about that. And then uh, come to find out shortly thereafter that the executive vice president of communications for the team, Bill Wickett, lived in my neighborhood. (laughs) So naturally, and I developed a friendship with him and fantastic guy, as most of the people in the area know, he's just um, moved to Nashville to become the chief marketing officer for the Predators. So we're going to miss him. But um, because of those relationships with the team, they gave us financial help in building the rink. 
They do a lot of things in helping us run leagues and they do clinics. We get to meet some of the alumni. So the relationship has kind of organically grown all by itself, but it started basically with a phone call and they were tremendous to deal with and they still are. And once again, Oldsmar's first in something. So we were the first outdoor rink established by the Lightning Maid Foundation. Am I right? In Pinellas County, Pinellas County there were several of them. Several rinks existed that the team had nothing to do with. They were in process in, I think, Pinellas Park and uh, Lakewood Ranch, I think, and Lakewood Ranch is in a different county. But, yeah, we were the first one to actually get finished and put one in play in Pinellas County. Oh, so how is the Lightning contributing on an ongoing basis? Well, I kind of covered that a little bit because they do, we get to see the alumni, they do clinics, they help us run with leagues. You see them at every one of our public events, all the way back to the haunted Halloween drive through They bring all their Bolts team with free gear for the kids, and nice. they, they support us in every way possible. Every special event, you'll see a lightning representation with free stuff, and they couldn't be better to work with. The, the I still say they're the most professionally adept um, organization in sports. They're just fabulous to work with. They concur with that. So besides hockey, what type of other programs are um, provided at the rink? Well, we did try to make it multi-use and the Lightning had no problem with that. Um, There's a lacrosse club that uses it. We do some Zumba classes there. Um, We're kind of hoping to get to open skating. Um, The surface is kind of a challenge, but We've we kind of use we've used it for a job fair for Congressman Bill Rackus. Um, we use it for almost anything. It's great that it has cover. That helps. You can use it's a big surface, um, too big for us old guys to continue to play street hockey in. But street hockey is one of about ten things we use it for. Nice. Um, so thankfully, Oldsmar has begun to really truly open back up, which is obviously great for our restaurants, businesses, and attractions. Um, are there a few events our audience might be looking forward to that you could tell us about? Yeah, sure. The Oldsmar Cup Race, which is an annual affair, um, Saturday, April 10th, the Tampa Bay Downs, which some people may or may not know is not technically in Oldsmar. It's in actually in Hillsborough County, but they use Oldsmar mailing address, and I think they wish they were in Oldsmar, which <laughs> w- we like hearing Who doesn't? That. that comes with a free entry, and all you have to do is Give your Oldsmar address ID, and everybody's invited to the winner circle following the Oldsmar Cup race for the winner. Get a picture with the winning horse. Um, we also have a Sunset Sound series, which is a concert series run by our Leisure Services Department. The next one is Friday, April 16th at Arields Park. Unfortunately, I don't know who the band is scheduled to be, but we finally got over our jinx. We used to have a running <laughs> gag with Chip that if he had a concert on Friday, it was going to rain. And the trap rock junkies played two weekends ago at friday and it was a big success so we got that rolling again he's got a fishing tournament on saturday april 17th at mobley bayou um the opal theater for the friends of the arts have a theater in the park and beauty and the beast performance outdoors on the stage at ariel's park also on saturday april 17th great show for the kids uh the last show they did we had over 500 people out wow. and it was just fabulous And we have an annual recycling day, something we do every year. We usually vary the spots, but it's a chance for you to get rid of paper that you want to get rid of up to five boxes. It does have electronic recycling and prescription disposal. That's Friday, April 23rd from 8 to 12 p.m. at the sports complex. Yeah, we get a lot of calls to the city for information on that. That's a lot of residents and businesses as well. Look forward to that to kind of do their spring cleaning. If you have any uh, doubts about whether or not it's getting recycled, there's actually a window in the truck you can kind of see it working i'm i'm a little retentive so you know you give them up old tax records or something and you're going are these really getting destroyed and they'll show it to you right there they're really getting destroyed so a lot of shredding it's kind of cool so the experience oldsmar the, the this is a triannual triannual magazine appropriately a town experience oldsmar so it hit the streets in early march and our residents should know how passionate you are making sure that publication is now mailed to every resident in oldsmar We have copies, obviously, available at the library, City Hall, and Cypress Forest Rec Center. And I believe the Chamber has some downstairs as well. So what's your favorite part of the magazine? Probably the spotlight. We do a business spotlight and a family spotlight. And we just it's just such a cool way to find out something about a family or somebody that's contributed 
to the history of the wealth of the city. Um, there's a lot of great parts to it. Um, the reason I was so passionate about getting it to everybody was largely um, for the quality of the work, and both of you guys are involved in that. Um, our communications and marketing division have just done such a fabulous job with the layout and the professional presentation, the photography, the articles. It was just so impressive that I thought we need to make sure everybody gets one of these. And I think that's worked well because now, okay, we pay a little bit more in postage, but I now hear that it's a legitimate coffee table edition <laughs> in a lot of people's minds, which I think is a great thing because you tend to use it as a reference guide, but it has human interest stuff in it, you know, stuff to look forward to. And I think it's really become a nice asset for us. Thanks in large part to you guys. Oh, well, thank you. <gasps> the lightning round. <laughs> so, Al, what are you currently binge watching? I'm binge watching a show called City on a Hill. Ooh. And I just started it. I am a binge watching freak. Um, I was on Blacklist for Ms. Spader. eight seasons. I love James Spader. Um, now, I guess I'm waiting for the season eight to go uh, to Netflix or whatever because I hate commercials. But <laughs> I've, I just finished that as far as I could take it. Now I'm on City on a Hill. Who's in that? Uh, Kiefer Sutherland is the no. I'm sorry, Kevin Bacon, oh, who I confuse with nice. Ke- yeah. <laughs> Kevin. I confuse him with Kiefer Sutherland. Um, Kevin Bacon's in it, and Aldous Hodge, I think his name is Hodge, is an actor that I've seen in a thousand things and could never remember his name. He's an assistant district attorney, and it's in set in Boston. It, it's it's not grab me yet but it's getting there it's it, i just started as going a little slow but I, I can see it has potential i have to add that to my list i hope you do okay next we have early bird or night owl well i hope you guys don't consider this a cop out but i'm going to say both um <laughs> i i i'll blame this on the stress of the job but i don't generally sleep I usually go to bed early, but I don't usually sleep through the entire night. So I could be up at any time. And uh, years ago, when I had my hips replaced, I learned the hard way that you got to take your rest where you can get it. So I could be asleep. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, I could be asleep at any time. But um, I tend to be accused of being both an early bird and a night owl. Depending on the circumstances. Got it. And finally. Broccoli or spinach? French fries. Oh, good retort. (laughs) Yeah, it's green. It's not for me either. So just saying. So, wow. Oh, my goodness. Time has flown by. Well, thank you, Al, for being the inaugural guest for our first podcast. And, of course, special thanks to our awesome engineer, Mark McGinley. So be sure to follow and like the City of Oldsmar on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To find our list of podcast segments, visit experienceoldsmar.com. I'm your host, Deb Vitrelli. Until next time, I invite you to check out all the great things you can do to truly experience Oldsmar. Oldsmar.